everyone, Saul here, and welcome to another episode of Often Haunted. This is where I get to read you some of my original ghost stories. The piece is finished. Maybe I don't get to do the time lapse, but I still would like to read it. So as many of you know, I like to paint a lot of pictures of fairies, and I tend to use coffee stains when I paint them. And today I'm going to feature one of those, because apparently yesterday was International Fairy Day, so what better time than to read one of my favorite fairy stories to kind of rectify the fact that I missed out on International Fairy Day. So this story is called Tender Hands, and... Uh, the sun! So this story is called Ten... Ah! Ah! <sighs> so this story is called Tender Hands. Made entirely with coffee stains. There's a little bit of pen drawing there, but as you can see, these, these very capable hands of an elderly lady are flawlessly being able to hold this fairy, so much so, that she's able to pass out, and that is not an easy thing to do. Ah, here we go. Tender hands. She always has to remove the little mischief makers. They have come in to sleep near the hearth. She does it gingerly, muttering about what a bother it is, and yet it is the high point of the seen-it-all crone's day. Her family, her friends, they all seem to have forgotten her. But she always remembers these little sleepy buggers. It is another one of those strange mysteries of fairies and females. Were I, a man in good health and adept in my stealth, if need be, to come to one of these enchanted evenings, she would wake up immediately, in some cases, before I entered the room. Not so with this elderly one. She strolls in with the carelessness of a waiter in the back kitchen come to collect the meal as fast as possible for yet another patron. In she waddles. As soon as she catches the latest passed out pixie in the corner of her eye to scoop her up in her storied old palms with just the balance of business as usual and tender care. That is what enchants them. Tenderness. The little things are wild skittish, fierce, and quite temperamental. Ay, but somehow it is her tenderness allows her to apply the hard truths they seek to play out again and again. I would swear my hands are warmer and quieter and more coordinated than the callous crones. Alas, it is not my fate to feel the trust of the little creature's body weight in my hands to feel her tiny belly and ribs expanding and contracting in my open palm, to shield her from the little fireplace's sparks with my other hand. It is not for a man to smooth her hair with a fingernail as big as her head is. I could make a small nest for her from the shreds and shrouds of old cotton and linen shirts on the cold sill outside and set her there. Yea, I would even pull some cloth across her, but only in my daydream. Alas, her eyes would pop open as soon as I approached her, and she would do so with as much defensive consternation as if I were some lean wolf in the night with glistening jaws of deathly drooling hunger. <laughs> I cannot fathom why, on the other hand, the callous crone is able to place her on the same cold window sill outside, then shut and latch the window, and I swear, not as quietly as I could do, all without waking the little thing. The physics and the unseen laws of the fairy's realm, it is frustrating to my hunter's mind. I often muse at the irony that this very same callous crone who shoes away the peaceful sprites she kindly took me in from the storm, and I have been grateful ever since. <laughs> Those strange drifter days of my life wherein I met the elderly lady. I remember that night when I discovered the scooping. I lingered near the living room until my calmed ears were pricked with a cacophony of complaints and clacking heels while she scooped a small thing which I thought was a large firefly. Then she walked away, and I saw another sleeping, soft, 
I crept over to it, and Lord strike me down, I beheld what looked like a tiny winged nymph. The wee thing quickly awoke, startling me backwards, and shot out into the cold without. I tell you, I saw the whole thing. The next night it happened again, without fail. Soon my heart felt a pain for the poor little buggers. After all, they just wanted this warmth of her hearth, but the callous crone wasn't having any of it, saying, It was bad luck to let a fairy inside. They belong in the forest, no matter how cold it be out there. I offered the following night to move the next little one, and she said not to bother for they would never allow a male to even get close to them. Undeterred, I tried one night only to be thwarted with one snapping awake and hexing me with fogging eyesight. <laughs> I required the aid of the old woman's spectacles for a week. I do not know what makes the fairy seek the pleasures of the callous crone's hearth or why it is the crone's duty to tell her the hard truth of banishment, but the old one had pointed out something interesting to me when I challenged her, observing, It seems they never take your lesson, ma'am. They never learn, so why not let them stay? Because, you see, it's never the same fairy comes back. And that is Tender Hands. This story was the last fairy that I did for a special series that I embark upon every February. I call it Febru Fairy, where I, I take coffee and I paint with the coffee stains and I make a plethora of fairy stories, fairy tales, I guess you could say, though I find them to be more like ghost stories in a way. They feel very haunting the way they come. And this one was the February, February Fairy of 2020. So this was very special. When I finished this one, within about a month, the whole world changed. And I kept looking at these pieces and I just felt these are the last pieces of a certain world I'm used to. So they take on a special power to them. And, and one of the things that I don't really have the time to do it anymore, but this was the last February fairy where I painted a fairy and, and wrote a story with the drawing every single day of the month. So that was either 29 stories or 28. And this was the very last one. So this piece came after I had done a full month every day of making a picture of a fairy using coffee stains, which are which can be incredibly difficult to control, uh, and then writing a story with them. But uh, in the end, I am so in love with this piece, and uh, it is one of my favorite stories. And I feel very serene whenever I look upon it. So this is called Tender Hands. And I hope you enjoyed the story. This has been another episode of Often Haunted. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that when I send more, and there's definitely more coming, uh, you'll be the first to know. If you love ghost stories, fairies, mermaids, werewolves, I'd love to see you here. And I would love it if you left your thoughts on the story in the comments below. All right, well, I'm Saul Landerman. This has been Often Haunted, and I'll see you next time. Take care. How am I going to turn this off now? This this was the last February, February this was the last February ferry where